Hi, I'm Mike. And hi, I'm Ash. And uh, boy, we're really excited to bring this uh, video series to you. It's something you've been asking for. It's Craysters Secrets on Crayfishing. You've seen us go out in the videos and be really successful. Um, we catch wild crayfish. Man, it's great. Oh yeah, and uh, you know, just over the years, we've really figured some stuff out. You know, we read about some stuff, but trial and error. I mean, we know what really works. And we just thought, you know what, it's, it shouldn't be a big secret. We want to spread this so that everybody else can have more fun and be more successful. And uh, share the wealth of knowledge on the great thing called the internet. Yeah, the, the first one is, is Craysters Secrets to Catching Wild Crayfish. And then we have a follow-up video to this. Yeah, so our next video is going to be, what do you do with these things called crayfish when you catch them? Get really good at it and you're catching a bunch. And there's a lot of little things that you can do. It's just going to make them taste a lot better. And so you can eat them you know, year round. And uh, I don't know, it's just, it's again something we got figured out and we want to spread that in knowledge. They're right? so fun to catch and, oh, and yeah. families love catching them. It's great family time. You bet. Um, one thing is with my family, the reason I got into this is I took my son to the Oregon coast mm. when he was three. And he and his cousin, well, I took him out on a dock and went crabbing. And uh, they had the time of their lives. It was like they were, they were just freaking out, catching them, laughing, playing. Well, after we came 12 hours home inland, my son couldn't stop talking about it. I mean, he's like, I love crabbing. And I'm thinking, oh man, I'm not making the coast a lot. It's a long ways away. Then I remember when I was a kid, my dad took me cray fishing and I caught some. I remember how exciting was. I thought, well, I wonder if I have any in, in our area. Ends up, we have tons of them. Matter of fact, every waterway in the world has crayfish. Yeah, you know, that's what I was really surprised about. There's crayfish everywhere. I mean, everywhere. And so it's a great, it's a wonderful family activity, great to eat, yeah. you know, and then I remember the first time we took Ash with us oh, crayfishing. I'll never forget it. Well, it was a great time, but it was so different than what I thought it would be. Uh, for some reason I was singing, going around through some muck, you know, I, I mean, I, I brought hip waders, he overalls, did. extra clothes, extra boots. I didn't know what to expect, you know, because I didn't ask. and. I was in for a real surprise. Man, oh, you had so much fun. I, I backed the truck down to the, to the dock, took the, thing, took the traps out, and threw them over, and you're like, this is it? I was like, no, this isn't it. We'll crack a beer and sit here and hang out. Oh, man. Oh, we had a blast. Was he was like, and he was like, oh, I knew this had to be easy if you were doing it. You know, I'll admit, that's, that's probably another reason that, you know, why we get along so good is, is you like do things the way I like to do them. Fun, but you don't have to work too terribly hard for it. You know, people work too hard in life. You, when you have fun, you want to take it easy and really have fun. Exactly. And one thing about crayfish is it's totally sustainable. You can't catch them. You can't overfish them. Um, each female can lay 300 eggs yeah. a year. Yeah. So you, you can catch as many as you want. Like in our state, there's no limit. You can yeah. catch a million pounds. They, they don't care because right. they know they're going to reproduce faster than you can catch them. And so that is just... The neatest thing. Um, yeah, you know we've we've tried to put a dent in them. You know, <laughs> we've but, tried I mean, hard. We've tried. <laughs> just can't we've do had it. Fun doing it, and it, there's just so many of them every year. And we're you're gonna hear some new terms from us. Um, we kind of we we know a lot about it. We're gonna teach you guys some things you've never heard before. But one thing you've never heard before, something we kind of made up. Yeah. We've heard a lot of this stuff on the internet about about what well, do you call it? crayfish? Do you call it crawfish? You hear us calling them crayfish. Why do we call them crayfish? Well, this is something that we've coined and we're sticking with it, and I think it's going to stick. From now on, a crawfish, that's something small, that's like five inches or something, but we throw those back. Five inches from tail to pincher. Yeah, but now we catch crayfish. We are a crayster after all, and, and crayster catches crayfish. That's way bigger than five inches. Big ones. I mean, we've caught them up to ten and a half. I mean, big, Huge big crayfish. Ones. And so that's what we do. We go out to catch a lot. Yep. We go out to catch big ones. And that's what this video is all about, is oh, teaching yeah. you how to do that. Yeah. Uh, so stick around, and uh, I think you're going to enjoy the rest of the video. The weather's looking a little bit questionable, so I think we're going to take this inside. We're, we're going we're gonna to head on into the cabin, and uh, we're going to take it up. And uh, there's lots of topics. It's going to be exciting. You we'll bet. see you here in a minute. See you then. Well, we made it to the cabin and uh, we're ready to go over some, some really good information and a lot of this may be kind of obvious or but you know we're just we're covering all of the bases so all this stuff is, is going to equate to everything working out for a good we're, we're going to get to some secrets here in a minute but but one thing you really need to know is to get going really well 
you want to really kind of research your area. You know, you yeah. can you can talk to locals, you can talk to people who fish a lot, talk to sporting goods shops, right. talk to fish and game, find out some good places right. to go. That's just sending you in the right direction. Well, yeah, in fact, uh, a couple of years ago, we went to uh, Strawberry Reservoir in Utah, and we thought, you know, let's go to Utah and see what's available. And so we just did a quick you know, web search, and evidently there's a lot of crayfish in Strawberry. And we went and we just knocked oh, them out. You can watch that video. Crazy. We caught so many and ate so many crayfish oh, on the shore. It was yeah, silly. It was a good time. Yeah, but, but we just a little I research. Mean, we couldn't just go to some place where there wasn't crayfish, so we just did a little bit of research, and it, it really paid off. And then the other thing is, is another thing you want to do before you go out, especially for your first time, is kind of know your, your seasons. Like when yeah. we started crayfishing, and, and we didn't know what when they came out or when they didn't, well, if it ends up it has a lot to do with water temperature. Yeah, yeah, you know, you go out a week earlier, not catch one in the best spot ever. You think, well, yeah. I'm not going to go there. I'm not catching crayfish. A week later, the water temperature is different. Oh, they could be going crazy. Yeah, you catch just traps full of them. So yeah. you got to kind of know, you know, you got to kind of know when your season starts, when your season ends, so you don't go too early yeah. or too late. Get it right in that prime time. Like for instance, in Idaho, um, where we're at, it's our starts right just just at the end of June and ends. Just just the first week of October, just right. time for hunting season. Now I'm from Nebraska and I haven't crayfished there for a long time, but what I recall is it was much earlier and the water there was just warmer. So it's you really gotta research that because if they're hibernating, you ain't gonna catch them. And I was talking to somebody online from Alabama mm. and they said that they their crayfish were coming out the start of April. Yeah, so it's all different, but it's all water temperature. Related, and you got to make sure that they're out and about. If they're hibernating, and you won't catch them. So and, it's very important. Another thing that you really want to pay attention to is, is you know, Craster, we're all about. We want to follow the laws. Yeah. We want to make sure. Find out if you need a fishing license. Yeah. Find out, you know, there's like in our state, there's certain dimensions your traps have to yeah. be. There's certain times. There's certain ours. You can fish anytime you right. want. And there's no limits. Right. But you just got to know when they're coming out and going away. And it could be X amount of traps. It can be which which can and can't use for bait. Trap size, this, that, and the other thing. Do you have to have a license? And it's just a good idea to be as compliant as you can be, so that way you don't get in trouble. So get some good, some good information going. Get doing it right, and get out there. Now we're gonna kind of get into some of the meat of it. Here, oh, yes. here next, we're gonna we're gonna run into some secrets that you never heard. That's the basics. Let's get to the more advanced. Okay. So now we're going to get into the meat of the subject. When I say meat, I mean bait. Bait is very, very important. And it's oftentimes overlooked by people. A lot of people will use a chicken leg, they'll use a hot dog, they'll use corn, bacon, they'll use bacon dog food, cat food, I mean crazy stuff like that. Well, you know, what are your thoughts on that, Mike? My thoughts, bait is utterly important. You're going to hear that here and there. People don't know why it's important. Right. Um, I know why it's important. Um, and I hear other other people talking about this subject, and I think, well, you know, I used a catfish head, and I didn't catch that many crayfish, and I don't know why. Um, I'll tell you why. When I grew up over on the coast in Oregon, um, we used to go crabbing a lot, and uh, the old the old sea captain said, hey, don't don't use lingcod in your in your crab traps. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Now, now I, I want to interrupt you, but did he sure. say, did he say, arr, and I don't use any of the... Oh. <laughs> he did say, arr. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, continue. I just no, I so, so uh, after the arr, <laughs> arr. he said, he said uh, you know what, uh, ling cod eat crabs. And you put, you put crab, you put, you put that in a crab pot, and uh, it's going to scare your crabs away because they, they, they smell that and they think, oh, geez, that's going to eat me, and they, and they run the other direction. They said, you know, put, put other oily fish in there They're, that's what attracts them in and the th same exact thing yes. applies to crayfish what what kind of baits have we used that have worked for us well uh what you really want is you want an oily fish you want like pink salmon trout stuff like that uh, you do not want bass and, and catfish and no. pike because they eat crayfish. See, this is written into their DNA. Yep. Is it, when that crayfish is born, it is encoded in them, stay away from catfish. Yeah, they smell it. They, they'll go away from your trap. Oh, like, and yep. so it's not rocket science. It's in their DNA. It's literally encoded into their little brain stem. And, and, and that's... Some know, of the best... Yeah, some of the best... I, I went out and I bought pink salmon. Yeah. And people are like, oh my gosh, salmon, that's oh, salmon. expensive. That, that I bought pink salmon. a high roller. I, 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 I bought salmon for $1.99 a pound. 
pound. I bought 10 pounds. It lasted me almost all season. Yeah. There's not a lot yeah. that goes into a trap. Oh, you'll spend more than that on gas twice going crayfish. Exactly. And then another thing you can do is you can buy salmon heads, cut them in four, put them in four traps. It's a quarter trap. Man, the crayfish just come yeah. running for them. I don't know about you, but I would much rather have crayfish caught from salmon heads than I would you know, uh, salmon head soup, but that's just me. I mean, oh, yeah. You know, that's, uh, but that's, I agree. that's the way to do it. And, and that oil permeates through that water and they, they come around. I mean, we've got video footage which, which proves it. Trout, they, they trout is really good to use. Um, so is tilapia. Yeah. One thing you want to be really be careful of, like in our state, you can't use any game fish. Yeah. So you can buy fish and go use it. The, right. the, the fish and game, I, I actually called them and did some research and they said, you know, we don't really mind if you use your, your trout carcasses, the, the bones and the head or whatever but it's written in the laws that, yeah. that you're not supposed to use game fish and so right. but you go down by pink salmon man it's got the same oils in there yeah. it tracks me in so fast that it's not even funny see and this goes back to what we were saying just a little bit ago as far as check your local laws uh, you know read your your fishing your regulations so that way you know and if you have a question uh, call the game warden and they'll probably even tell you where to go they'd be happy to get them out of there and, and, and so no, tasty. the other thing is 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 don't go out and do this and then go well I'm gonna go but yeah. oh no I'm just I run the internet hot dogs work good if you if you're gonna do that don't 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 tell us that you didn't catch them right, we right. don't want to know use right. this bait if you want a bunch right. to eat use the right bait they're really gonna come well yeah I mean if you catch them with uh, you know chicken legs you're gonna catch two or three. Uh, Get yourself a more and have a cocktail. Uh, <laughs> you can have fun. You may not make a meal though. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's all about using the right stuff. Very important, and a lot of people overlook it. All right, we're going yeah. on to our next subject. Next subject. The pink salmon, they absolutely love. Um, we fill our traps with crayfish. Come running. Um, a lot of times, if you try to use other fish, uh, sometimes it's predatory. Um, if you use bass, if you use pike, if you use catfish, sometimes those eat crayfish, and when they smell that in your trap, they'll actually run the other direction. Salmon is not a predatory fish. Um, they come running, they love it. So that is our biggest secret bait. Try it, you'll love it. So uh, as you can see, bait is very important, but just as is important are traps. You know, uh, I can go to the store and buy all kinds of different traps. And uh, I don't know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, my, my thought on traps are, you know those little traps, those round ones with the little holes in there? Oh, yeah, I know. You know, those are the kinds we first start out with. The only thing I can do with that now is it makes a really good garbage can. Yeah, I true. sure didn't catch very many crayfish in those. What ones. about that story you were telling me? Oh man, Jake and I, we went we went out on the lake one night when we first started out and we had some of those store traps and we threw them in the water and, and uh, there were a few we were using good bait. We kind right. of figured that part right. out, but right. but there there were crayfish that had come in, and there was this gigantic crayfish. It looked like a little lobster. It was like ten inches long, yeah. and it tried to get in there, and it was so big, it couldn't even get its whole its claws in yeah. a little hole. Right. And it was climbing it. around on top. And Jake's like, "I want that one. It's huge." You know, yeah. he's a kid, and and we all, long story short, we did not catch that crayfish. And we heard people on the lake talking. Well, we've heard there's really big ones here, but we can't seem to catch them because yeah. they're using bad traps and and yeah. it ended up that Jake you know he's like he's like well how do we catch some of those big ones and we tried ordering traps in modifying them none of them worked we ended up making our own traps yeah and and what are some of the nice features on our traps well uh, the big thing is and this is you know universal is it's important that the crayfish can easily get into the trap and fit into the trap Fast. Now, now that sounds like a no-brainer but it's very very important as are all these things but yeah, they've got to be able to get in, otherwise you're not going to catch them. Yep. And uh, they got to be able to get in efficient, efficiently and quickly. If you're going to use a good bait and, and you're going to use a good trap, they don't have to run around looking for holes. You don't yeah. have to put it out all night. We, a lot of times, you watch our videos, we put them out for half an hour, 45 minutes, we'll yes. catch 50 yeah. crayfish in the trap. We never let them soak for longer than an hour, and that's no exaggeration. And a lot of people let them soak all night, no. And, and you know, one thing that's really interesting is people think, hey, you can only crawfish or crayfish at night. Man, we've got some so we got some secrets that we've come up with that we haven't seen out there. What kind of that's things true. are we doing today? Kind well, of fish? Uh, what we tried doing and what seemed to work really good for us, and I'm sure it's, you know, universal all the way around, is uh, we started uh, coloring our traps kind of like the color of the bottom of the lake of where we were, you know, crayfishing. Uh, kind of a tan. It's almost like a, like a lake camo. 
And sure enough, it seemed like they're less apprehensive about going in there because that's just part of the bottom of the lake bed. It's nothing suspicious to them. Like, do, 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 there's food in there. Let's go and eat it. Oops, I'm trapped. And it seems really, really helpful. Well, watch our daytime fishing trip. We catch more crawfish and crayfish in that trip than most people catch yeah. in, in uh, true. Sundays. I mean, we just catch a bunch. It's so fun because out in the middle of the day catching a bunch, um, most people take their little their little traps. They don't catch very many. They get frustrated. Yeah. Use a good bait. Use a trap they can get into fast. Hey, if you have to make your own trap, make your own trap. If right. you can find a trap that they can get into super fast with your good bait, right. you're going to catch a bunch. Now, something else that we found is is the depth. Now, for what we do, where we generally go, Five to fifty foot is about the max. We could go down to hundred foot. There ain't any crayfish there. Yeah, we haven't found any. No, any. but so where we go, it's five to about fifty foot. That's that's about what I'd say. Now that may differ a little bit where you're going. So that may be a little bit of trial and error on your part, or maybe talk to the people that are in the area. Uh, but for what we found, depth is important. And five to fifty foot, that's it. And it uh, seems like right off the shore is great. Down yeah, to about yeah. twenty feet's prime. Thirty prime. feet's good. Get out about fifty, off. you still catch a few. Yeah. Um, but yeah, check your depth. Um, usually, you know, right, yeah. if you don't have a boat, right off the shore, you should be just fine. And I'm not sure if that's a temperature thing or a pressure thing. I don't know. But five right. to fifty foot. Well, crayfish. A lot of people don't know this, but they eat like eighty percent or more vegetation yeah and yeah. then and then when they what they do is they go out to find some of this nutrient rich food with with the oils in it and the in the meat so they can get enough fat in their system right. to make it through winter time right. so that's why they really come when they don't give any opportunities to get yeah. meat when they get good meat man they go for it you know there's a lot of science behind this stuff and it's all basic stuff that's why we're you know laying it out to you but all these things add up to being successful and and you don't want to overlook any of them yeah, absolutely. And uh, we're going to roll into our next topic. Sounds good. Okay, so now we've came to our final segment. Now, this is important. Now, if you've been doing all these things that we've been mentioning, now you've got yourself a problem. Now, it's a good problem. <laughs> a big problem. But it's a good problem. Yes. It's now you've got a lot of crayfish. What do you do with them? Well, it's very important to keep these things fresh and healthy and happy until you boil them and cook them and eat them. Exactly. Now, very important. Now, uh, I don't know if you've seen like uh, World's Biggest Catch or whatever. They talk about lobsters and, and uh, I'm sure some people might know this, but you don't want a lobster to die because it releases toxins and that kills all those other you know, lobster buddies. It's kind of the same thing with crayfish. It's the exact same thing. Yeah, well, it's a similar species. You know? it's, it's, it's the same it's thing. It's pretty much water. the same thing. Yeah. And, and that's why they taste so good, too, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But um, anyway, long story short, it's very important to keep uh, good, clean, fresh, oxygenated water, so they're all you know happy. Now, originally, what we would do is uh, we just had a cooler. You know, this is generation one of us, you know, cray fishing, and we'd scoop things out, and we'd scoop out the old water, we put fresh water in, and we keep them kind of happy that way. Keep oxygen. Yeah. Thing. And then as soon as we got done cray fishing, we hired, you know, we hightailed it back to your place and boiled them, and, and that worked pretty good. Now, if you live a long ways away, that ain't gonna work too good or whatever. So you could also use a bubbler. Now you purchased a bubbler at a big box store for like what, thirteen bucks? A battery operated bubbler. It was twelve, thirteen bucks. I yep. mean, it's gonna pay for itself. Uh, again, you'll spend more than that on gas just getting there and back. And, uh, and hey. so you know that's an option. But why don't you tell them about what we See, started? Well, Dob, let's not even tell them. Let's show them, and then we'll talk about it. Check out this clip. We're gonna show you how we keep them fresh. We made this equipment. Yeah. But it, man, it works good. Check this out. Got some pretty nice crayfish in here. Creature catcher, like always, is getting up. Oh man! <laughs> oh man! Drop down a little bit. For some reason, there were just <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot of crayfish today. Gonna drop these down to the bottom and keep them fresh. And uh, that's only our second run of grabbing all the traps, too. <laughs> we're gonna go catch some more kokanee. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Find a nice, safe spot to drop these back down. Oh my gosh, that thing is heavy. That's awesome, dude. Minimal effort, maximum fun. <laughs> <laughs> maximum poundage. Okay, so that's our creature catcher. 
which is actually a creature keeper. Creature but, keeper. But creature catcher kind of caught on. It's and, stuck. And it looks like a big trap, but all, that's just where we keep all it. You know, it's like a live well that we submerse. You know. We, yeah, we we put all we put our crayfish, crawfish yeah. in there, and then we lower them to the bottom. Man, they're great till oh, we take yeah. off, and they're happy and healthy. And and yeah. you know, one reason that people don't understand, they're like they're like, well, you know, I don't know, I want to I want to crawfish and crayfish and. and I put them in a cooler. I got home and they all died. Yeah. And when they die, they don't taste as good. No. They're not as fresh. And no. the, it's just not. You're not supposed to eat dead crayfish. Right. But you know why they die? Is because they run out of oxygen. Yeah. When that when that oxygen stops flowing that water, they die. Right. You, they can get a ways, but yeah. man, if you live a short distance, you can probably throw some more water in there and hightail right. it home and cook them. But if you don't, if you live a long ways away, by the time you get home, they're right. going to drown. Hey, you put me in a cooler, I'm going to run out of air. <laughs> the same thing with crayfish, except you got to keep nice, fresh, oxygenated water in there. And, uh, you know, you make a good point as far as being really tasty and, and fresh and whatnot. And and uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, I had some, some crab legs. They were pretty good. But, you know, uh, I don't know. I think I just didn't have fresh, fresh you know, crayfish that I caught. You can't beat it. I mean, well, so unless good. you live on the ocean, you cannot beat it. Fresh, healthy, and a, and a nice, you know, healthy body of water. Absolutely, yep. And 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 you can catch as many as you want. Uh, in our next segment, we're going to show you our next video. We're going to show you what what you're going to do with all these. Yeah. A lot of how to keep fresh, but not only that, it's how to cook them, how to how to take care of them. How you can, like I said earlier, this is not a one trick pony thing. Man, you, if you're really good at catching crayfish, yeah. you can eat them all year round. Yeah. Not only can you have the big crayfish boils like you've seen us do, like you've seen other people do on the internet, man, you can you can eat them all year long, and we can show you how, and we can show you dis different yeah. recipes and different things you can do. Man, they're delicious all year long. Yeah, they are. Now, fresh is obviously a little bit better, but if you do it right, uh, you can have crayfish six, seven, eight months after you caught them, and it's not bad. It's it's just it's pretty darn good. Absolutely. Now, hey, you know what? One thing that Ash usually says, I'm going to say it, um, if you like our video, like our video. If you have questions, you know what? Ask those questions. We don't mind answering you questions. You bet. Yep. And uh, we hope to hear your successes in crayfishing soon, and we're going to come out with another video right after this one. And we'll catch you next time. Suck the bat from around the <laughs> bat. <laughs> they got me with trap ball. The dangers of crepe. <laughs> I just hit him in the head with a shell, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it shot off his glass. Have you seen that episode of MASH where, where Frank Burns said he got a purple heart because he had a little bit of shell fragment in his eye? It was egg shell fragment <laughs> in the mess tent. You remember that one? No. Oh, it's it hilarious. That pretty much. Oh, it's a great show. <laughs> egg. Egg shell. So they said it was a shell fragment. That is hilarious. So he could get his, his, his purple heart.